Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I guess we're uh, I guess we're live. Let's check the uh, we're checking the connection right now. We're doing this from my uh, what is it, my your phone doing a hot spot? I do I'm doing a hot spot. So let's uh, let's see if this works. Good there. I guess it's not pulling up there. Oh, oh, there we are. All right. So good morning, everyone. It's early this morning. It's six thirty. I had to get out of bed. Ever since I was out of ops, I got it. Certainly, I know. Just for you. So first, first off, not just for me. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. Um, again, this is uh, Jordan Hess. Jordan, what, what's, your, what's your title now? You just moved back to Houston, right? Yeah, I just moved back to Houston. I'm currently a reservoir engineer in our Rockies operating area, specifically over the Bakken. Uh, previously, I started out with a venom as a drilling engineer. I want to talk a little loud. It's a little from background <laughs> noise. Um, was a drilling engineer. And then uh, after a year there, I transferred to work out of our Oak Archie office right outside of Oklahoma City and moved into a field operations role before transitioning back to Houston and All coming right. back to Reservoir. So when did you move back to Houston? Uh, it's been about a month. No, not quite a month yet. So about a month. You're in, the, you're in the Heights now. we got mm -hmm. Tyler Schultz just moved in the Heights, yep. too. We, got the, we have the gang back together minus a couple people. Yeah, the gang's back together minus a couple people. Ken, you know, moved back out to Midland. Yep. Working out there. So look, the point of the, the point of this breakfast, uh, the breakfast runs with JP. Look, you know, obviously in our in our industry, breakfast runs is a time to connect with customers to, uh, you know, either either connect with someone new or kind of uh, keep a conversation going and kind of you know shoot the bull around the uh, around in the, in the morning with a cup of coffee. And it's usually you know some operations related, some more general oil field activities conversation. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're going to kick this off, uh, and uh, and I'm so pumped that the first guest here is Jordan. Has I'm so pumped he's back in Houston. It seems like forever when you moved uh, when you moved away. So, so why don't you go uh, what, what, talk to us, man? So you moved away pretty much at the, the beginning of COVID, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, when I left here, we were just in a weird transition where you could work from homes, kind of work back in the office. But uh, they transitioned me out to the field, which move out there and life is yet to change. You know, it was steady rolling. You have to steady keep operations going, and so. That was a what good was the, thing what, to see. Was, what was the feeling when you were out? I guess in the field uh, during this whole uh, the, the COVID time. I guess with the morale and everything, everyone uh, is talking out there. Well, so yeah, I moved to the moved to the field right after you know we went negative in oil price, and so I got out there and we we're looking at twenty thirty dollars a barrel. And uh, the real feeling out there was keep LOE low and do all you can to keep your cost low and cut costs where right. you could, but still at the same point optimize production because still every barrel out of the ground is still you're affecting your bottom line. And so that was the, that was the game we were playing. So we call slow. So what kind of stuff? Know. So you, so you just uh, got your new position about a month ago, I guess, I guess speaking on the operation side and the production side, what kind of, uh, I guess, a trends were y'all seeing, I guess, or I guess a uh, business strategy or if obviously I don't want you to speak too, too close to the, the event is a, uh, you know, business model or anything like that. But I'm just talking about, you know, general trends that you've seen. Well, general trends, you know, capital, anything capital intensive was pretty much put on the back burner and everything that you could do for low cost optimization was brought to the forefront, whether it was changing up your artificial lift techniques yeah. at surface or cutting down your compression or gas lift, anything that you could do to squeeze an extra few dollars out of your LOE, every, everyone was trying to do. All right. And so we just transitioned that. And then. You know, as we were talking, yes, we steadily moved forward to better pricing environment. A lot more of those projects that had a little bit more capital involved came back to the forefront. So it was exciting. So, so there was some excitement going. Yeah, on. there's excitement now. At first, it was, you know, just everybody was holding on for dear life. Dude, everyone was probably like worried about. It. Everyone in the industry was worried okay. about their job at the time. And you know how field rumors are. Ooh. And during good times, they're bad. During bad times, I mean, they're just steadily coming out. Okay, let me ask you a question about field rumors. I always found out that majority of field rumors are probably, you know, like 70% true, right? Yes, I don't know are. where they start or how how the information gets there, but like it starts and it's kind of true. Like, what, what, were you seeing that too? Oh yeah, you know, it was whether they were cutting back on, you know, where everybody, of course, was cutting back when the price crashed, but when everything started coming back up, it was really slow to bring people back. Yeah. And then it got to a point where you couldn't find people. Well, everybody was worried at first, you know, they were worried people come back, hey, they, this might cost me my job if, you know, COVID resurges and everything. Okay, was, so there's know, a lot of hesitation. And a lot of hesit hesitations with that. And then like the restructurings. Yeah. You know, companies. Everybody was like, oh, next week we're having another restructuring, which never came to fruition. But 
it was, those were the kind of rumors you saw, whether it would be for from a service company or from an operator that I talked with out there. But that always makes you nervous out there. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. Cause you don't know what's going on. You're not in the office. Oh yeah. You don't know what's going on. And no matter how much you think, you know, you still, once you hear a lot of rumors like that, it's, you start getting that little itch in the back of my mind. Like, Hey, it stays might, there too. Hey, you know, you might want to save up a little more or <laughs> just be ready. So I don't think you have me to save up enough no. in, in reality. So wait, so, okay. So now you're in reservoir. So this is your first kind of uh, stint in reservoir, right? Correct. So talk to me about that, man. So, so how'd you get in this role? All right. So, um, at Ovenib, we have a pretty extensive um, rotational program, which is really good. I mean, it gets you out of your comfort zone. Me, I come from a blue collar background, so I was very mechanically inclined. Me too. And so, drilling, production, completion, stuff like that was in my, in my wheelhouse. I was okay. comfortable there. Um, but one of my great managers in my past, you know, Kate Hiking and oh, drilling, yeah. she always stressed to me that, um, you know, you need to get out of your comfort zone to really grow. And so that's what I feel like this rotation is for me in Reservoir. It's that next step of getting me out of my comfort zone and really looking at the business from a different point of view. And, um, oh, it's been exciting. So I, uh, in my third year of rotation, so this is my last, re- okay. last year. Okay. And so and then I'm, you're finally going to get a, a, a full-time full, job. Yeah, full-time job. You know, I won't be a rotator. Congrats. That's big news. But, uh, but no, I've, I've loved every step of the way. I've learned a lot, met a bunch of amazing people in our industry. And uh, this is just another you know step along the way and working with an amazing team that's really taking the time to, Help teach me and get me up that learning curve. Man, what a politician. I like this guy. Is this your first time behind the camera? Yes, I yeah? it is. How you doing? I'm sweating a little bit. You know, I'm, you I, really? I'm a, you know, kind of a fan girl towards you, so well, I was really, blushing this morning. Wait, you're, a fa- you're a fan of the new uh, the new podcast? The new podcast. Yeah. Energy Crew? Energy Crew. You avid listener. It? Avid listener. Okay. Are you listen to the one with Tyler? Yeah. Yeah, I got to support my boy. You know why they call him uh, a Bayright? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Y'all got to tune in to find out what it's yeah. all about, right? So what else? So what else? I guess y'all are seeing on the on the on the operator side right now that I guess we you know is commodity prices are kind of staying where they're at right now. I guess what are y'all's I guess uh, caution items or stuff that you're looking out for um, as activities kind of picks up? Yeah, cause, I mean activities picking up, but it's I know it's a weird pickup. It's very slight. It's not. If you you'd go expect back, it to be more. Yeah. When you go back and look at history. Um, the last few times that the oil has spiked like it has, everybody's been eager to throw capital at it. And right now, people aren't quite as eager to do so. Right. And so um, we preach that, you know, we're staying capitally disciplined. But then just on our earnings call the other day, we're asked, oh, well, why don't you leverage a little bit more? Do you think you could get, you know, more money on your capital? And you're like, literally a year ago, you're you were condemning you know, us. I know. Yeah, you're condemning I know. us for debt. And so – that was interesting to see, but you now everybody from a public operator side staying pretty disciplined. Yeah, they are, which and is, is kind of good. To, I think that's good to see. Yeah, it's good to see. And you, you know that, as cyclical as an industry as we are, that'll help flatten that curve out a little bit. We'll flatten kind of the curve. Flatten the curve. You know, that's a theme. That's a few years. Is, yeah. But you know, you won't have so many ups and downs. We'll kind of hopefully we'll get to a point where. So we. Kind of so I guess. With, a, so I guess with price. with capital, I guess being you know. Strained, you know, people watching like where the dollars are going a little bit more and all stuff. How was that? I guess trans like translating to like I guess trying out new technology or trying out like a, a new uh, a, a new piece of the operation. Oh no, you still have to you still have to want to advance because you don't want to ever become stagnant and stay how you work. Because I mean, the thing is now is like we're capitally constrained, but trying to do more with the capital that we have, right? Right, and so. Just can, you got to continue to innovate. You just have to be smarter about it. You don't take as many of the risk as you once did when the pocketbook opened at a hundred dollars a barrel. It was different times. It was different times. You know, I, think, I, I was I was only an, I was an outsider at that time. Was oh not really? In industry so, at hundred dollars a barrel. So you yeah. have this is for, you haven't experienced uh, good haven't, times in the industry yet. Yeah, no. I came in, you know, as an intern in fifty dollar oil. So it's just been a constant time. rut for you. Oh yeah. And you and you're still loving it. Oh, I love it every day, every day. Well, what about? It? I mean, it's always pessimistic. I mean, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. Besides, I mean, what, out of your words, what, what about you? Do you love about? It? So, one, I have a little family background in the industry. Um, on my mom's side, I'm third generation oil field. On my dad's side, I guess you say I was, or no, mom's side fourth, dad's fourth? Side third. Yeah, my great grandfather was a driller down in. Uh, Platinum, Louisiana. Really? Yeah. Platinum cool. Parish. So then down below New Orleans, he actually drilled the deepest well in the world at one time. And uh, that was kind of, you know, setting records and 
things like that. It's kind of one of the things that drove so me. So holidays, to y'all talk a little feel. You uh, know, yeah. that was kind of your introduction to it. And then my uh, my grandpa actually, uh, my grandpa uh, got out of the oil field and went into uh, teaching. Okay. And on, so that was exciting. But my on my dad's side, he um, he just got out. I think it was probably four or five years ago. He just got out of the oil field. We had um, what, what would he do? We were had a natural gas compression company. Okay. In uh, in Bell Chase, Louisiana, and he worked. I mean, he worked that growing up. My granddad, when he got off the boat in World War II, ran into J. Paul Getty, and after their conversation, J. Paul asked him if, you know, do you need a job, son? And he said, if you do, be at the airport in the morning. And my granddad was there, and so that's it. He took the plane back with him and started working for Getty Oil right after World War II. That's pretty cool. And so yeah, that's always talking to him about you know the early days of. So it's, so it's in your roots. It's yeah. in your blood to, to be in the oil field. Oh, yeah. And I, and I love it. And that just goes, like I said, being from a blue-collar background. I'm the first engineer in the uh, group, but being from a blue-collar background, I mean, the respect I have for the guys out in the field. And also, you just got done with a, with a role, I guess, um, uh, rotating out there. Yeah, I was a field operations engineer, so I got to work day in and day out with those guys. And, you know, that's a, a shout-out to those guys out there. They're, it's an amazing group. You guys know, and girls. Guys and girls. And, Jordan, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a great. I, I, it's a great I love. Time. I love talking to you know, the, the people out there. I mean, it's always it's always good banter. Oh yeah, it's good banter, and they taught me the things they teach you. You can never learn. No, like I had um my engineer that was over from here, and my production coordinator and leads out in the field were uh, phenomenal. They really took the time to help me learn things, get up that learning curve, and then help being accretive to the value in the field, and actually begin to. Are you, help out. are you seeing a lot of people, I guess, with a, a lot of industry experience um, leave the industry, I guess, on your side? Like we're creating a kind of a vacuum of knowledge, I guess, that you could can kind of absorb. Definitely. And uh, we, I know that's a big trend right now when it comes to EH&S, you know, with the safety side is a lot of the short service employees. Um, a lot of people left and never came back. I even know some from my group that yeah. were just starting out only a year in the industry when everything fell through. And several of them, with being engineers, went into teaching roles and all. And, you know, life happened, and they just never came back. Like, I know one girl I graduated with, and she got married and got pregnant, and so she didn't want to come back to the industry. And a lot of a lot of things like that, or drinking the roles that you had here and taking what you learned in those traits yeah. and going to other industries. Um, another friend of mine went into data analytics, you know, for – um, like military, I feel like I feel like I feel like during COVID, data analytics was like the hot word that got oh, brought yeah. up. That and ESG. I know ESG, and then uh, definitely data analytics. I mean, I, I think on you know Instagram, Facebook, every school that you could think of was popping up. Hey, we have a data analytics degree now. I'll come, you know, do this. And but I mean, the job it was spreading like wildfire. And the thing that goes with data analytics, you can work from home, and so. There's your COVID. And y'all y'all have been back in the office for a long time. Yes, we uh we got uh, office relatively quickly. Um well of course it was always up to his voluntary. And um but yeah, we got back in the office. You know, that's the big thing I missed about the COVID times and things like that were you know, just being able to bounce ideas off of somebody down the hall. Well, plus I, also, I mean, man, I've been to a bunch of lunches with you and the teams over at Event. Y'all y'all are a good group over there. Y'all uh Y'all got a lot of personality. It's always a, a fun lunch, fun group to work with. I oh, yeah. Oh, every every group I've been with that I've been, I've been blessed with an amazing team that get along. We work hard, but we make it enjoyable. And that's what makes it. I mean, that's what for me, like you said, what, you know, has kept me loving it through basically this rut that I've been in. And that's it. The people. Are, I you, mean, are you excited for your first boom? I'm, I'm excited. You know, this is something I've like. This is literally the highest price I've ever seen. Really? And so it would be nice to really. Big day, big day, big day. So wait, you're going from FRCs to button ups now. How is that going for you uh, personally and emotionally? Well, getting dressed now takes a little more, you know, deliverance when you're trying to pick out your outfit. Right. In the field, I threw on a hat, FRs, and bare underwear. It's called called the day. I get it. Because, you know, I'm going to miss that point. Like, you go out clean, come home covered in oil or, you know, iron sulfide, the F black stuff that comes out of our vessels. And never washes out. Oh, never washed. Never it washes out. Say. But it always made it fun. Oh yeah, it uh, brought me back to when I was working construction or working in the uh, worked in the plants around Baton Rouge. I was in college. So how much? So talk to me about this. Now you're back in the office. It's post COVID. How much are you going to play? Are you going to introduce politics into your group and try to play that game, the hard hitting like white collar game of politics? 
I, I try to I try to stay humble with. I don't like getting into politics that much. Like, but are you gonna try, the office politics. So you're not gonna try to introduce no. it? No, I definitely. I would, man. You I would, would. I would start that political game. Well, I, I just kind of I try to come in. I've always pictured if you come in and you come in genuine. Yeah. Um, that's probably the best way to do it because that way you never have to put on a you know fake face. Dude, I'm all, you know, just say genuine. I, I you have, play the politics like no, like no. Your coworkers and like, hey, you know, ask about the kids and stuff. Well, first of all, I'm completely stuff. joking about the politics. I hate <laughs> politics. All right, but, I was about to say, but I, 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 call you I always, I always chime in on like in this, in this day and age, like you got to be genuine. I mean, shoot, shoot, you always got to be genuine the entire time. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think like right now, I think it's uh, you can tell if if people are trying to say something or be transparent. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean that, and that's the thing uh, from the op side where you have to know with the vendors and everything too. You have. You know, you have to really look at, you know, I like the ones that always came to you and cut through the BS, you know, yeah. and really like, hey, this is um, this is what we're looking at. And this is what to expect, you know, because you, know you, you know what you're working with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so that's really been been fun. And then that's the same thing that the way I've been looking at projects with reservoirs, you know, there's so much uncertainty with what you do in that on that side because you're basically guessing what a well is going to do before it's ever drilled or put in the ground. So do you have good mentorship, I guess, to, mm-hmm. for all these new roles you're kind of uh, jumping into? Oh yeah, no. And uh, as the teams have been shaken up through the restructurings and different things, I uh, actually felt lucky to fall into this team, um, our Rockies team too. We have a lot of lot of depth, or not really a lot of depth, but we have a lot of knowledge and for how lean we are, and so it brings a lot of different perspective to you know, attacking different projects and I can go and talk to three different people. We can huddle up in a room and really brainstorming, you know, find well, the, the best way. Well, the fact you said there's not a lot of depth to the team, I think you're definitely going to hear about that when you get to the office in a little bit, but Hey, we love the team there. <laughs> we love the team. There. <laughs> you, you that's know, what we're saying. We're a little lean. You know, everybody is these days. Everyone's lean these days. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of like you, we had talked about before. Do you see people coming back to the industry and you don't, and, uh, you start seeing that gap and trying to fill different roles and stuff. It gets difficult. That's something that I'm hearing. Obviously, we, we talk about this now. We kind of uh, kind of have a couple more BS uh, questions on stuff. But you're seeing a lot of the challenge in the industry is yeah, a lot of people are leaving, um, and and it's not just experienced people. It's it's the you know people that are in the industry for as you said a year, or eighteen months, or something like that. I mean, what could we? I mean, where do we stand? Well, I mean, what could we do as an industry? I guess to to bring in talented people and I guess keep them here versus people being worried about you know ebbs and flows in the industry, which there are, will always be. Yes, I think um, there are always going to be ebbs and flows, but I think, you know, part of going back to the capital conversation we have, if we do a little bit more to protect our balance sheets, we'll see being able to, you know, protect the employees rather than having to cut or sink, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that'll be probably the best thing that we can learn moving forward because as, you know, we steadily progress as an industry, it's going to, if we don't do something, it'll be like it. When I first started at Newfield, there was a gap. There's about a ten-year gap that, that we gap. saw between the young engineers and you know the middle managers, the people like yeah. your advisors, and, and um, there was like no one in between. No one gap. in between. Yeah. yeah, and so you know, trying to keep that from happening again, and just keep a like basically a consistent, um, you know, leveraged group of people that can, can consistently battle anything that we come up against is going to be definitely yeah. important as we continue. Because the industry is ever changing, you got to keep up with the times. Do you like the changes going on right now? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we're swapping. We're going into kind of what I came up with in school. You know, data analytics. We're trying to drive it more. It's not as empirical as it used to be. It's uh trying to make more informed decisions. Which me, uh, I was just talking about this with someone the other day. I'm more of a gut intuition type person. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to how I think about things. But that only comes from you know experience and knowledge. So, so you don't do analysis paralysis. Yeah. Okay. But now, but since I, with my lack of experience in the industry, um, with me being so young in my career, I have to fall back on that to make informed decisions. So, if that's another thing getting me out of my, I, I guess comfort zone. I think really, you, yeah, making me grow. That's you know what when you get out of your comfort zone, you grow. Yeah. That's something you learned this morning on the breakfast run. On the breakfast. So you excited to be back in Houston? Yes, yeah, so I'm excited to be back in Houston. What'd you miss about Houston? I just miss, you know, the great group of people we had there and my friends and um, just being able to just feel settled down. Because, like, in Oklahoma, um, I worked, and yeah. then on the weekends, I was either going to 
see my girlfriend or friends in other places or just hanging so out. So you didn't there. have like a you didn't have like, like a home. Have, I didn't really. Yeah, I felt like I was always on the road. Right. And, I mean, I had a I had a work like during work I had a work family, you know, because you you work. I was working ten and four for a good portion of my time, and so I had a good work family. Like we did everything. Like during work, we were good and good. I mean, it was peas and pods, you know, but. On the weekends, fun. it was you know just difficult. I was always traveling or trying to figure out something to do. But now that I'm I'm back here, uh, I'm just getting to see friends and family that I hang out to see as much. So you're in the Heights now. I'm in the Heights. Yeah, I'm right down the road from right. you and so right up the road from Tyler. Tyler just moved in too, and we're actually uh, recording this at Roast and Brew Coffee, Beer, Wine, and Bites. I don't even know why we're plugging them. We just asked. We just filmed them. But anyway, we're plugging them. Yeah. Um. What What else you got? You got anything for me? Uh, yeah. So how's uh? I mean. Since we last talked, I know you were transitioning into this new podcast, new role, yeah. starting your own business. So right. how's all that going for you? First off, that's extremely personal. I don't even know why you're breaking that up right now. <laughs> hey. Um, but hey, hey we'll dive breakfast into it. Runs. Breakfast, breakfast runs. Breakfast runs live. No, man. I think uh, I actually think things are going pretty good. Like, it, it, So it, it kind of came from a discussion like between my wife and I. You know, It's like I enjoy like – promoting brands i enjoy like getting in front of people uh hosting like unique networking events because the stuff that worked in the oil field doesn't work anymore breakfast runs lunches aren't as effective industry events are great i love them like i see all my friends there but at the same time it's like if if you don't create the 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 connection that you need so kind of decided to take this uh this on the road and just kind of offer the services to people and companies out there and i i I, there's a need for it the feedback i'm getting is pretty good and uh there's some excitement around it, so uh, I, I'm digging it. I, I like the I like the concept. I like the idea. I think it's needed in our industry. So we'll see what happens, man. But we'll see. You never know, man. Oh, you you got to follow your passion. <laughs> and, and it seems like you're doing it. It's been a while. I think so. And this is part of it, man. Oh, yeah. Doing the breakfast run. The breakfast run. Hey, thank you. Do you miss me. real breakfast runs? I do. Um, you really? I, I, I kind of miss some of it. I mean, I didn't really get to see it in its prime. But, and I'd heard stories, you know, of course, from my uh, family that was in the industry. And what good? About, you have any good stories? Well, so my grandpa back in the day, he used to go to breakfast runs. So if any of you are familiar with a uh, Judge Perez in South Louisiana, okay. he's famously known as the judge. I mean, he basically ran South Louisiana. All right. But he always loved my grandfather as the guy that he could never buy. But he would always go to lunch with my grandfather. And so that was always interesting. And so, like, he could never, like, sway my grandfather to ask his employees to vote or anything. Because, you know, it was a corrupt time back in the Oh, 50, yeah. 60s. It was a different and, time. Uh, it was a different time. And, uh. But he could he loved my grandpa because he could never never talk him into it. I dig that. And so they had some good stories. Well let's sure. see let's see who's uh chiming. I know you gotta go to the office and do actual work, but this is work too. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's extreme work. So we got uh Oh we got we got Alan Hurt. Good morning everyone. Kevin Burns, what's going on? I think he's in Midland. So if anyone's in Midland, hook uh look up uh Kevin Burns. Uh Shane Sure, thanks for tuning in, Thank brother. You, Shane. Commenting on a little history. Well, Danny Salinas, appreciate it. Oh, everyone has to work in the field. Like I, I kind of agree with oh, that. I, I mean, I, th- I think the experience and also the, the, the ability to communicate with with people from the CEO down to the you know the oh, pumper, like yeah. it's crucial. And it gives you an opportunity. You can learn from everybody you meet in the field, whether it's the guy that's driving the you know pressure truck or you know other operators. Or I mean, there's nobody. You should take every day in the whole field. There's another chance to learn something new. Somebody, if you ever think you're the smartest person in the room, you. You need to go follow back that road. You're never smart. I know. You know what's funny too? Like you know, being on like you know, energy crew and all that stuff. You know, people are like, oh, how come you like like you know, how do you get your gas? And all? Like honestly, like it's pretty much everyone because everyone in our industry has a story. You know, oh, yeah. I don't care what position, what role you feel like. Everyone's got a different story on how you got in the oil field, and I'm, I guarantee you have some entertaining stories. So that's kind of what I like. Oh yeah, definitely. talking to everyone. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the that's the great thing about our industry is with it having that blue collar background, the stories are vibrant and everywhere. And I gotta give a shout out to old JD Smith, John Smith, the Cuevas Coffee uh, Roaster. This cat was oil field. He's still looking to uh, to kind of help out in the oil field. He'll do some uh, well site supervision or something like that. But he is an owner of Cuevas Coffee in I think Bolivia, and it's pretty. It's it's really good oil field coffee. Gotta give him a plug because we're at a coffee shop. But I want to throw uh, some love out to him because we've got a supporter industry in our community. So hook JD up uh, if you want some delicious coffee uh, shipped to you. What? We'll have to try it out. Might have to take a trip to Dallas. I'll take a trip to Dallas, dude, or Bolivia. I Check Bolivia. out that. Check That'd out that farm. Better. We got hello, uh, morning from Midland. I don't know who that is. And then um, you guys have a career in politics. Thank you. 
No, we don't. <laughs> I do not like politics no. at all. So no politics. anyway, Jordan, everyone, this is Jordan Hess, uh, the reservoir engineer, training, rotator, rotator, yeah, training whatever rotator. you want to call it. I don't really, I don't like training. I'm not calling it training. Just new in the reservoir group, man. I appreciate you starting off this first breakfast runs with JP. I enjoyed the conversation. I hope everyone out there that's watching this now, thanks for waking up this morning and uh, tuning in and, uh, we look forward to seeing you on the on the next uh, breakfast runs with JP. Definitely, thank you for having me. It's great to kick this kick this event off. Do you want to give any words of wisdom to the team, your team right now, before you go into work? <laughs> the words of wisdom, to my the team. words of wisdom to your team right oh, now. Patience, patience, have patience, have, have patience. Me. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we well, appreciate, it, buddy. Hey, thank you. Let's do an awkward this, and then I'm gonna pass it up oh. and do that. <laughs> so, all right, everyone, thanks you for tuning in. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. I get the last word. <laughs>